Country music singer in Las Vegas shooting now supports gun control. That's right. And you can see the, if you're watching the video here, you can see who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Caleb Keeter. Caleb Keeter chooses dangerous tyranny over dangerous liberty. My name is Paul Gordon. I'm with iState.tv, and this is today's iTalk. And it's all about Caleb Keeter. It's all about the Las Vegas shooting. It's all about the gun grabbers. It's all about pushing back and pushing back hard against their anti-human, anti-liberty narrative now being pushed out, being written in blood. So a member of the Josh Abbott band took to Twitter to express his reaction to the Las Vegas shooting. Caleb Keeter, his bandmates, and members of his road crew were among the people that faced the terrible fire from what can only be described as a deranged man's rifle. Now, in that context, it is perfectly understandable that Caleb Keeter would be shaken up. I would be fundamentally shaken to my core. Uh, that he would experience an incredible amount of fear and anxiety. I can't even imagine how much fear and anxiety I would experience in that situation. Yet what is not understandable is how this man chose to channel his fear to do an about-face on the fundamental right to self-defense. And that's essentially exactly what this man did. Now, before I get to his screed, which I, I will be dissecting, I want to say a few words about and to the gun grabbers. Uh, among whom they can now count Caleb Keeter as a member of their dangerous, gov-worshipping, sycophantic club. And yes, I've said some harsh words to them yesterday in our in our I talk, uh, which actually featured how the politicians were basically using dead bodies as a soapbox. I spoke uh, more harsh words. Uh, about the gun grabbers in last night's episode of Full Auto with uh, Professor Rambo, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I, I have a lot more to say to the gun grabbers, and yes, in some of these videos over the next coming days and weeks, uh, I may very well be repeating myself, but this bears repeating. I I want to let you know if you're one of these gun grabbers that I am treating you like Nazi enablers. That's right, Nazi enablers. I, 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 broke, uh, I, I broke the Godwin's law. I did it. And I unapologetically broke Godwin's law. And yes, I am even talking about the so-called common sense gun legislation people. I'm treating you just like you're a full-fledged gun grabber because you know what you are? You are the camel's nose, the proverbial camel's nose under the tent. That's who you are. So I'm treating you like the whole freaking camel, which is the gun grabber camel. Many people in 1930s Germany would absolutely not have supported concentration camps, but they would support some common sense laws to address the Jewish problem. In this case, we're talking about the gun violence problem. This soft support gave more than enough ground for the concentration camps that came later. So, too, do the soft supporters of common sense gun laws give ground for the eventual all-out effort by the state to confiscate all guns. Now, I'm not saying for sure that the state will... We'll get there, whether they get there in my lifetime or whatever the case might be. But that is, that's where it ends up. So to me, there is, and I mean this, I mean this metaphorically, there is a special place in hell 
for the people who choose to use dead bodies as a soapbox to plead for gun confiscation and gun control while not also calling for the government to be likewise disarmed and managed. Now, if you don't trust your neighbors, but you trust goons with gov badges, you might be doing life wrong itself. Also, you're a dangerous neighbor, a snitch in the making. Caleb Keeter, he experienced one of the most difficult aspects of liberty, the chance that others might abuse that liberty and hurt innocent people as a result that that's 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 the place where he found himself unfortunately he found himself in the the leading edges of the dangers of liberty where that place where others might abuse that liberty and hurt innocent people as a result he looked danger in the eye he looked the danger of liberty except to be exact in the eye and the man chose to blink he chose to run to the false security of an armed state, lording it over unarmed people, ignoring the fact that a state which is empowered with such liberty, when it decides to go rogue, kills far more than 60 innocent people in a single event. No, it kills thousands, even, even millions. Now, to be fair, I want to try to be fair, as fair as I possibly can with Caleb, but really, I I I don't I don't have much uh, I don't have much fairness to give you, Caleb, because of the dangerous game that you are playing. But anyway, to be fair, perhaps Gail, take Caleb get Keeter will rescind his comment, but I personally I doubt it, and honestly, I hope in some small way my tie's not right there. Yeah, that's not right, dude. I can't have that. I hope in some small way that uh, maybe he'll see this, or other people will 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 say similar things to this guy to talk him out of his tree. But but I I seriously doubt that someone who fundamentally understands the critical importance of maintaining the ability of self defense for all, not just for government people with magic badges and special licenses, that, that, a, that a person such as that would take such an about face because they had experienced a threat to their life at the end of a gun. Me thinks that uh, Caleb Keeter might very well have been a gun rights supporter because, well, that's what the audience he was marketing to seemed to favor. He he very well, and and I don't know this for sure, but I strongly suspect based on this about face, you just don't do this. I strongly suspect that this man was an opportunist, and now I suspect he feels emboldened by his special status as gun victim to be able to say gun control now. I suspect that what you're seeing now was truly who he was the whole time. I don't know that for sure. I don't know his heart. I'm just I'm just speculating. I'm just giving my opinion here. But regardless, let's let this man's I would say cowardly words speak for themselves. And he he posted this on Twitter. I've been a proponent of the second amendment my entire life. Until the events of last night, I can express not express how wrong I was. We actually have members of our crew with CHL licenses and legal firearms on the bus. They were useless. Now prepare yourselves. Prepare yourself for why he said they were useless. We couldn't touch them for fear police might think that we were part of the massacre and shoot us. A small group or, or one man laid waste to a city with dedicated, fearless police officers desperately trying to help because of access to an insane amount of firepower. Enough is enough! How dramatic, Caleb! How dramatic to use your words and your victim status to advocate 
for taking away the fundamental right of self-defense of your family, your friends, your neighbors, the fans who made you the wealthy tool that you are. How lovely of you, Caleb. Now, let's go back to analyzing his words here. He pointed out that the guns these guys had were useless because his friends feared if, if they used them, they might be shot by the police. Take that in, folks. These are the same people that he wants to assure are the only ones with guns, legally. Whatever legally means. Had there not been such an anti-gun environment, the police would not have believed that people shooting towards the shooter and not at the people were part of the massacre taking place. Now, to be fair, I'm not sure that if, if he and his buddies decided to take out guns, that the police would, in fact, have assumed they were part of the shooter. They may very well not have reacted the way that he thought they would. And I'll point this out. And I, I'm, uh, as you know, these uh, videos are based on the articles that I write, which you can find at iState.tv, and which I link in the in the description and the comment below. But I don't point this out in the article. But I do want to point out. I will be honest with you. I, for for the caveat being this, that you do not 100% know how you are going to react in that situation unless and until you are in that situation. Well, with that caveat being thrown out there, let me say that I believe that if I had the guns, now if I had a handgun, I'm probably not going to try to stop this guy with a handgun because my chance of doing that is not very high. But if I had a rifle... I, I I feel very strongly watching people get mowed down, watching people that I I ostensibly love and respect and work with uh, at risk that I would use that rifle to hell and be damned even if I feared maybe the police might shoot me. I believe, I can't be 100% sure, but I believe that I would go ahead and take that rifle out. So I guess I got to ask Caleb and everybody else there. Why? Why didn't you take the right? If you, if you had rifles. Now, maybe they don't have rifles. I don't know. If they didn't have rifles, then okay, I understand. But if you had rifles and you didn't take them out for fear that the police were going to shoot you, well, I'm, I'm not going to judge you too harshly on that. But I am going to point out that if if that's the case, if you had rifles, you made a choice. You made a choice basically to to look after your own self interest which is which is okay but but own that own that reality don't act like you're magnanimous and and interested in the welfare of others when you've clearly demonstrated that you're really interested in preserving yourself which is fine i got nothing against self preservation but 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 don't lie about it. Don't pretend that now suddenly you're interested in the welfare of others, especially when your interest in the welfare of others is to deny others their fundamental right to self-defense. Now, as a point of fact, if you research the shooting that took place in 1966 at the University of Texas, when a man went atop a clock tower and started sniping people, many people happened to have access to their rifles, and they used them to fire back, pinning the assailant down, saving who knows how many lives. Now, they had no fear that the police would shoot them because there was no rabid anti-gun culture as there is today. Now, to be sure, 1966 had a whole lot of other mess of problems, but anti-gun culture was not one of them. So what he has identified here is a problem or a perceived problem, to be fair to the police, with how the state would react to his guys using guns to fight back. And his response is to advocate for these same police, the ones he feared would shoot them if they shot back, being able to go around and collect guns from me, my friends, my family, my neighbors. This is why I give this man no quarter. This is why I give him no benefit of the doubt. But this coward, well, he, he's not finished. He decides to go ahead and pile on. And he's going to hit you with uh, some 
some some emotional stuff that uh, were it not woven into this uh, anti self defense narrative, I would definitely have a lot more empathy for. Writing my parents and the love of my life a goodbye last night and a living will because I felt like I was going to live through the no- wasn't going to live through the night was enough for me to realize that this is completely and totally out of hand. You're choosing dangerous tyranny over dangerous liberty, buddy. Let's just let's just restate that fact. This is who you are. These rounds were powerful enough that my crew guys just standing in a close proximity of a victim shot by this effing coward received shrapnel wounds. We need gun control right now. You know what? I want you to see this if you you can here. Do I have that? Oh, I don't have it open. Uh, Next video. I want to make sure that I have it program so you can actually see the article i'll do that but if you if you could see it you would see the word right and the word now are capitalized right period now period how dramatic i want to point out some some facts right here in in what he says that 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 also reaffirms my suspicion of who this guy was all the while while he was preaching second amendment rights this guy's statement right there in and of itself reveals something very significant to me it reveals a man who doesn't know shit about guns Let's just put that out there. And it also reveals the kind of gun control that he's talking about. When this man says these rounds were powerful enough, this shows me this man is most likely, well, as I said, not terribly knowledgeable about the 556 or the 223 round. Now, the round itself is, is actually, it's, it's pretty small. It's, it's essentially a 22 caliber round. 223 it's it's essentially a 22 caliber round the power however of the round comes through its speed at over 3000 feet per spec per second now now it's a powerful round to be sure but as rifle calibers go the 223 is it's <laughs> it, it, it's hardly a, a heavy hitter it's uh it's it's what you call a a, a so-called uh, well I mean well I'll just leave it at that on the scale of rifle calibers the two two three is on the low end even with that three thousand feet per second now it's it's an accurate round and uh, that's that that's speed that's that's what what creates the accuracy and the speed is also what gives it the power that it does have. But I want you to take this in because what he is saying there when he when he let, let's go back here to these rounds were powerful enough that my crew guys just standing in a close close so so this is the sentence beforehand. What he's saying is these rounds are insanely powerful. They're so powerful that they 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 hurt my guys just standing next to somebody shot. That's when he chose to say we need gun control right now. The coupling of those two sentences to me strongly indicates that he means that the two two three man that's got to be stopped. That's insane. It's it's uh uh. As he said before that, this is completely and totally out of hand. It's totally out of hand that 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 that, that uh, human beings, that non-gov people, should have access to something as powerful as the two-two-three round. Never mind the fact that it's hardly the most powerful rifle cartridge <laughs> going out there. Now, uh, if he wants to talk uh, powerful rounds. He's also going to have to support banning many shotgun shells, including all buck slot, shot, and uh, slug variations. So how do you go from being a Second Amendment supporter to suddenly abruptly supporting banning essentially all rifles and shotguns? That's, that's what you got to do, Caleb, to keep these high powerful calibers out of the hands of, of non-government people like you. I would say seem to suggest that's what you're talking about. And and is he supporting banning rifles and shotguns that the government gets to use? I don't think so. 
he's only talking about banning rifles and shotguns just for the people. Do you think this guy has ever hunted in his life? Because if he did, he would never have talked about the 223 like it was some incredible, powerful, dangerous round that had to be taken out of the hands of people. Now, if you're going to go ahead and advocate, Caleb, for only government having guns, how do you think that's going to work out for you? If, if, it was just a, uh, if, if it was just a decision that affected you, then I'd say, hey, man, to each his own. But you're, you are using your platform, your now your unique situation, your, your standing as a victim to advocate for ruthless tyranny, and you don't even know it, Caleb. Maybe you do. I don't think you do. I strongly suspect you don't know the tyranny that you're advocating for. So he concludes his anti-human, anti-liberty rant with this. My... My biggest regret is that I stubbornly didn't realize it until my brothers on the road and myself were threatened. We are unbelievably fortunate to not be among the number of victims killed or seriously wounded by this maniac. Listen, Caleb, and I have his image up here. I want to make sure you see his face. Because that's the face of a gun grabber right there. When you're in the heat of battle, you learn more about yourself than those in battle with you. Now, I haven't been in the heat of battle. I haven't faced what you faced. I don't know who I am as far as that goes. I don't know if I'm faced in the same situation as you. Maybe I'll turn out to be the coward that you are. I, I don't know for sure. But one thing is for sure. Caleb Keeter... Unfortunately, you found yourself on the outer fringe of the danger of liberty. And yes, liberty is absolutely dangerous. Make no mistake about it. Anybody who wants to tell you that liberty is kumbaya and everything is going to be great is totally delusional. Because things like this will happen in liberty. People will have the ability to do things like this in dangerous liberty. Most of us who, who advocate for dangerous liberty fully understand. But when you were tested, Caleb, and again, the caveat being I wasn't tested, so I don't know how I would come out. I would sure hope that I don't come out like you did. Because, Caleb, you failed. You utterly failed. You proved yourself to be a coward. As surely as a person fails in battle who abandons his or her friends to save their own skin, so too did you fail, Caleb. Caleb Keeter, you failed. You failed in battle. What you found, I'm not saying that you can't right this ship. I'm not saying that there isn't some path to redemption for you. I mean, I've done terrible things in my life that, uh, you know, I took some time, but I was able to eventually... Uh, right the ship and redeem myself to a certain degree. So, you know, I, I, I don't want you to think that I'm judging you too harshly here. I, I, this is a moment in your life. It, may not, it need not be the whole defining moment of your life. But right now, in this moment, you have proven yourself to be a coward. You don't have to stay there. But that's where you're at right now. You've proven yourself to be a coward. And now you've signed up for the program. You're essentially, you're a government stool. You're a snitch waiting to turn your neighbors in. You're a useful idiot. You came to the false belief that dangerous liberty was somehow more threatening than dangerous tyranny. You chose the tyrant over the free person. You chose false security over the risk. And yes, it is a risk over the risk of being free. So I want to close this out by further addressing not just Caleb, but all the gun grabbers, especially the lawmakers. And finally, also addressing those who stand in resistance to this, this attempt to turn the blood in Las Vegas into the ink of a tyrant's law. I don't care one fig who the shooter was. You won't hear me mention the shooter's name. Totally irrelevant to me. 
I'm not saying that the name is not relevant. And I'm also not saying that 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 what motivated him is not relevant to in some context. Yes, it is. But in this context, in what I'm choosing to narrowly focus on, no. I don't care what motivated him. I don't care if he's a Trump supporter or an anti-Trumper, a Muslim or a Christian. I am not looking to hopefully find out that he's not in my camp. I Please don't be in my camp. Be in my enemy's camp. I don't care. I don't care if he's in my camp or in somebody else's camp. I'm not going to make any judgment or anything whatsoever on the camp that this guy may or may not belong to, work camps, whatever the case might be. The reason that I don't care is because the shooter and whatever group, camp, whatever you want to call it he may be affiliated with are not nearly as much of a threat to me right now as the gun grabbers are, as people like Caleb Keeter now are. Sending a powerful message to any idiot lawmaker, I'll put that in quotes, lawmaker, that thinks they'll have the backing to pass anti-human, anti-self-defense laws is essential. Sending a message to any gun grabber that their views are worthy of complete and total, utter contempt. And social ostracism is essential to letting these useful idiots, and I, I don't mean that they're idiots, I mean that in the technical term, the, the phrase useful idiot. Useful idiot basically being you're being manipulated to essentially do the work of people who mean to do bad things, not just to the people you think they're going to do them to, but to yourself as well. So this is, this is essential to let these useful idiots as well as the power-mad leaders that are manipulating them, know that their anti-liberty, anti-human views are beyond the pale, beyond the, the, the bounds of civil discourse. This is a no-go zone. This is a line in the sand. You do not negotiate. You do not compromise. We don't compromise with terrorists. We don't compromise with pedophiles. We don't compromise with murderers. We don't compromise with gun grabbers because you're in the same group. You're that dangerous. Over the next few months, a battle can be won or lost. And I, and I don't want to overhype this. I'm, I, I, I try to take a Stoics approach to life. There's so many things in our lives that, that we really don't have much control over. Uh, the areas where we feel like we have some understanding, where we have some control, we, 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 we do our best to maximize our efforts in those areas. And I believe that there is an opportunity here. Over the next few months, a battle can be won or lost. And for sure, even if the gun grabbers win this, this, this next round, and, and the next round is essentially, are they going to be able to pass more gun legislation? And it's not just anti-gun legislation. And it's not just anti-gun legislation in, at the United States, the federal level. That's going to be harder for them. They might get something passed. But it's going to be anti-gun legislation at the state level, at the local level. That, that there's opportunities for them now. And they will take those opportunities so long as they feel like they can do it without cost. So the war, it's not going to be over. Even if the gun grabbers win this round, it's not going to be over. But if we lose this battle, if we, by we I mean the people who fundamentally resist the notion of coercion, being used to force others to do things that are that are not directly harming others. All is not lost, but it, it means that what you'll be doing is is placing in the quiver more arrows for the state. So, okay, they may pass laws just like they did in New York and Connecticut. Laws that, you know, if they, they can't really enforce them en masse. They can't send out the people to go and collect all the guns that should be collected in New York and Connecticut because there's a lot of people that are ignoring those laws. But what they can do is when they target you, when you are a particular problem to the state, 
they have within their quiver now this arrow that they can point and shoot at you. They have more opportunity. Okay, they may not be able to get you directly for what it is that they want to get you for, but they got this thing over here. It's like Al Capone, how they got Al Capone. I'm not, not saying it was a bad thing they got Al Capone, but they got him on, on tax evasion. In this case, you know, you're, you're, you're a political dissenter. You're causing all kinds of problems. Uh, uh, they don't really like what you're doing, and you know what? They can, all they got to do is turn up the heat. You know, just make sure you pull him over and check his car. Uh, you know, have somebody call and say that he was a threat or she was a threat, whatever the case might be. And, uh, oh, we got a reason to, to go into your house. And, oh, we found, oh, well, look at this. This is a gun. This is illegal. This is, that's, that's how this thing is going to work. That's the danger here. Because I can tell you, any gun legislation that they pass is going to be almost, almost, ex almost entirely ignored. And they and they know it and they know that if they dare try to go out and enforce this gun legislation on mass, that it'll show people once and for all how truly powerless the state is when it passes laws that nobody agrees with or that 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 very few people agree with. And, well, I'll say it doesn't even have to be a majority of people that, that, that disagree with it. If the group that you're targeting disagrees with it, and they're a large enough group, you can't enforce that legislation. So finally, let me close with this. So many of you among the gun grabbers who are largely, but not completely, not completely, definitely not completely, composed of liberals, liberals, liberals that uh, advocate for a strong government because, as, as I've heard so many of you say, the reason... The reason why the, the government is the best choice to be able to rule our lives is because this is a democracy. It's of the people. Well, let me say this to you. If government is of the people, then why are you seeking to disarm them? If we're all the government, then why are you seeking to disarm us? If you want to disarm people and they are the government, then advocate for disarming everyone 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 all the shiny badges all the special licenses everybody has to give up their guns i want to hear that from you but i'm not going to the fact of the matter is that uh and this and this is a good thing you know uh i'm not going to say whether i'm for or against donald trump it's irrelevant here but i will say this that thanks to donald trump there are many liberals that are now seeing what conservatives have seen for a while. See, from their perspective, Donald Trump is, is a dangerous man. His, his administration is a dangerous thing. It's a fundamental threat, real or imagined, to their, to their very way of life. Now, all of a sudden, many of these liberals... They're, they're beginning to see that the government might not always be the most benign and that if and when it is not, the final and ultimate check on its taking of more power is an armed populace. And you know what? I, told, I, I, I totally welcome. I, I'm, I'm seeing, I just, I just had a conversation with a liberal today on Facebook in which uh, she she, I, I think she assumed that I was assuming that all liberals are anti-gun. I, I don't assume that because I've actually met some already. And she was assuring me, nope, not her. She's not anti-gun. As a matter of fact, she's part of a, of a, of a liberal gun rights group. Yeah, yeah. You're starting to see more and more of these. And I'm, I love it. I'm so happy about this. I'm a Visprovusian. I believe in the power of the individual, the free association over the coercive enterprise. I believe in the redistribution of power. If more and more people have the power to essentially defend themselves, it will raise the cost of coercion for anyone else who wants to use coercion to force people to do things. That means it'll raise the cost of the state to fundamentally go against people that don't want to be going against. That is a good thing. And I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm, I'm, you know, you, you're, you're, you're gun grabbers, you're, you're no longer just battling against conservatives or libertarians. Hopefully more people from all political and even anti-political persuasions 
and I think most anti-political folks, folks probably already there, will come to realize that we who wish not to be ruled by tyrants, who wish not to be, uh, to, wish, who wish not to even give tyrants an opportunity to rise, like I said in that comparison, in the Nazi comparison, who 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 don't want to give them a, the ground to possibly build the tyranny, we have a common interest. The common interest is to prefer, to preserve the fundamental right to self-defense for all. And you'll notice, I didn't appeal to the Second Amendment. I didn't appeal to the Bill of Rights. If you want to appeal to the Second Amendment, if you want to appeal to the Bill of Rights, and that's an effective way to get your you, the, the, these uh, wannabe lawmakers uh, uh, to, to stop them, hey, great, more, I, I'm all for whatever you got to do. I appealed to power, pure and simple power. In this case, you're sending a message is sending a message to all the political folks that will want to write, write these laws, even if they manage to produce polls that show suddenly a majority of people is for some form of common sense gun control. That if you write more laws and then you try to enforce those laws, that you're going down a path that ultimately you can't win. Because even if it is a min minority of people that, that believe the, the only gun control should be gun safety and aiming effectively. If, if, if that is a significant enough minority that is significantly determined to not comply, the state is a whole heck of a lot less likely to go ahead and, and, and test that power because you're, you're immediately raising it, the cost of coercion, even the very perception that the cost of coercion is raised is, in fact, raising the cost of coercion in and of itself. In George Orwell's animal farm, all of the animals were all called equal. But one day that changed. One day a new sign was hung, one that read, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. So too do the gun grabbers hang that sign. All people are equal, but some are are more equal than others with this little thing added on, especially the people that are on the payroll of the state. Now, Caleb Keeter, you took up that sign. You chose to accept the notion that all people are equal, but some are more equal than others especially the people that are on the payroll of the state. My friend, if, if you happen to see this video by some miracle, the dangers of liberty are but a shadow compared to the dangers of tyranny, which loom large over a bloody history littered with the dead bodies of hundreds of millions of people. So my name is Paul Gordon. This has been the uh, second uh, difficult high talk in a row here. I will encourage you, if you like the video, to do, do that thing that I always ask you to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm sure you hit the bell so you know the, the next time we are going to do a video. And I don't know what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I never know until I go through the news and I sort through. There's a fair chance, though, that I've got more to say about this. And I will encourage everybody uh, listening, watching, that feels like I do, to make your voice be heard. Be unequivocal. Be unapologetic. Be uncompromising. Be unwavering in your defiance and letting all those around you, all the gun grabbers around you know, including the politicians, including your friends, your family, your neighbors, anyone who, who, who is in that camp know, this, this, is, this is a no-go sign. This is a no-go zone. This is the line in the sand. This is, <laughs> this is, no. 
this is this if 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 you want to think of it as as the path of Thermopylae, which hopefully we have better odds than the Spartans did, but it's it's kind of that. We draw the line in the sand. This 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 far and no more. I'll see you the next time I make a video, which will probably be tomorrow.